A list is a type of data structure which allows you to store a group of data items. These data items are usually related in some way. Let's suppose I want to write a program that stores different types of fruit. I could do this using separate variables like this. You can see I'm using a different variable for each type of fruit. And then of course my program can use this information in some way, perhaps to print out a shopping list. Run the program, which I've already saved once. So I'm just resaving it. And there's my shopping list. But instead of using separate variables for each item of fruit, it's much more convenient if I store them in a Python list, like this. Let's have a little bit more space on the screen for the program. You can think of a list as a special type of variable that can store several items of data. There are lots of really useful features that come with lists. First of all, let me show you how I can output the entire contents of the list. I just use a print statement and I give it the name of the list. OK, they're not coming out in quite the same way as when I printed individual variables. You can see they're in the list format. But I can also print out individual items of the list, like this. This is going to print fruit item number three. Watch what happens. Item number three is the damson. You might be thinking, hang on, that's item number four. But actually, these items are numbered from zero. So the apple is item zero. And if I want to print, for example, the kiwi, well, that is item number zero, one, two, three, four, five. If I want to print each item in the list individually underneath each other, then of course I can do this. I've used a bit of copying and pasting to speed things up. But there are all of my fruit. Before you continue, you might like to try creating a list of your own. Perhaps you could create a list of fruit, like I did, or maybe a list of different animals or a list of countries. And then try outputting individual items of that list. If I want to change an item in this list, I can do so quite easily. It's rather like assigning a new value to a variable. To prove that's worked, let's print the list before I changed item number three, and then we'll print it again after I've changed it. So here is my list before I changed item number three, which was the damson, and here's my list after I've changed the damson into a fig. So you can see with a list, it's easy enough to change what's in the list. We say that the list is mutable. I can also add extra items to my list, like this. I'm using the so-called append method. Let's print it again. I'm going to close the shell window so I can get a nice fresh one. So there's my list with a new item added to the end. The append method puts the new item on the end of the list. Why not give this a try yourself? Try using the append method to add some extra items to your list. Now, if I want to, I can insert an item into the list. In other words, I can add a new item, but it doesn't have to go on the end. I can place it anywhere I like. Watch this. So this program is going to set up a new list with these items of fruit, and then it's going to insert a new fruit, a black currant, at position two. And then finally, I'm printing out the modified list. Where do you think the black current is going to go? Let's see. The black current 
has gone between the banana and the cherry. It's taken position two in the list and everything else has moved along. If I need to, I can check to see if an item is already in the list. I can do this using an if statement, like this. The list contains a grape. Let's try searching for a fruit which we know is not in the list. There's no output this time, because there's no plum in the list. Let's make this a bit more friendly. There's no plum here. I could even give the user of my program the opportunity to search the list. Let's include an input statement. So this time I'm searching for whatever fruit is in the variable called find me. And I've made a mistake, let's fix this. I think I've got too many double quotes. What fruit are you looking for? I'm looking for a lemon. The list contains a lemon. Let's run the program again and search for something which we know is not in the list. This time I'm looking for an orange. There's no orange here. Why not give this a try yourself? Create a list of fruit or vegetables or animals. Try adding some new items to the end of the list using the append method. You can also try inserting some new items into the list using the insert method. And you can also try checking to see if a particular item is in the list. Here's something you might like to try. Write some code similar to this to prompt the user for the name of a fruit and check to see if it's already in the list. If the fruit is already in the list, then simply display a message to say so. If it isn't already in the list, then append it to the list and display a message to say that it has been added. Pause the video now if you want to give it a go, and in a moment I'll show you how to do it. So here's a solution. Instead of asking which fruit are you looking for, I'm going to ask which fruit would you like to add. And instead of calling this variable find me, I think I'll call it add me, just to make the name a bit more meaningful. So if add me is already in the list called fruit, then the list already contains add me. Otherwise, I'm going to append it to the list. And for good measure, we'll print out the whole list. I'm going to do it unconditionally. Let's give it a try. What fruit would you like to add to the list? Let's try adding a kiwi. The list already contains a kiwi, and then you can see the whole list is being printed out. We'll run it again. What fruit would you like to add to the list? Let's try adding an orange. Your orange has been added to the list. And you can see I now have an orange on the end of the list. The shell window is getting a little bit busy, so I'm going to close it again. And next time I run the program, I'll get a nice clean one. Now let's see how to remove an item from a list. You might be able to guess how to do it. Let's get rid of all of this code. I'm going to say fruit.remove, and then I just need to specify which item I'd like to remove. Let's remove the damson. Run the program, and you can see that my new list doesn't have a damson in it. You might also try removing an item from the list like this. This time I removed the banana, but notice how I specified the banana. I said I want to remove item number one of the list called fruit. So you've got a couple of ways you can do that. By the way, if you're wondering why is the damson back again, well think about it. 
we're running this program from scratch and the first thing the program does is it sets up the list. In the next video, I'll show you how to iterate through the items in a list using a loop. In other words, how to visit each item in the list in turn.